Hey everybody, welcome back to the Woody Hayes Athletic Center and happy Monday from the Podcast Daily. Yes, it's the Monday of Big Ten Media Days week. It's a huge celebration. That's Berm. I am Austin. How pumped are you for what's ahead? Uh, I'm I'm fine with it. And that's why <laughs> today, you know, normally we have Freaky Friday. We've had more on Monday before, but today's a manic Monday mm. uh, because things get a little bit crazy as the the calendar turns almost to August. The Big Ten Media Days are here. We get to go to Indianapolis. We get to go to Red Devil Brewing Company or whatever it's called. Daredevil. Like, Daredevil. Cool. I call it Red Devil because it's red on the logo and it's uh, a, a devil. A devil. So <laughs> that, that's why I call it that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's what I'm most excited about for Indianapolis is the chance to go to mm. Daredevil, uh, which is Great pizza, great, great pizza. Sun King also nice, uh, nice. We got time there, so we're gonna Sun King their cream, uh, you know, their cream ale is one of my favorites. So for that, I'm looking forward to going to Indianapolis. How many do you think you'll have? I don't know. I'm not here to to put that out there this early <laughs> in the morning on a Monday, but uh, we're we're looking forward to the opportunity to to see some new faces. I'm, I'm curious, I guess, morbidly so, about how Northwestern handles this whole week. Um, but from an Ohio State perspective. We've seen so much of Cade Stover and Marvin Harrison, uh, GT2 Maloa in the last year that I don't think we're going to get anything particularly earth shattering or, or completely new out of those guys. But it's good to see how they are growing. Uh, and that's really what this offseason has been about for Ohio State. It's about a couple guys taking a step up in leadership, a couple guys changing their bodies, a couple guys emerging into roles that they have to be the guy to, to, to lead Ohio State if they want to get back to the Big Ten Championship. So. You know that that's sort of the the mo the message of the offseason sure. to me. It's just like, are you getting better? Are you progressing? All right. So, are you wondering why we're in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center? You surely are. We are in here not on Monday morning. This is actually Friday. Spoiler alert: Ohio State uh, has a handful of players out here with the camp, uh, working in tandem with you know some of the collectives and charitable efforts. Uh, so we've grabbed a few interviews, uh, and we'll see how many they wind up being. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we've got Cam Martinez, Josh Fryer, uh, you know, some some other guys that are going to pop in here to talk about the offseason thus far. Um, and it's Josh Fryer is the one that's caught my eye the most burn because it sounds cliche. They, oh, they worked with Mickey Mirati. They got stronger. Josh Fryer looks like a completely different person to me. Yeah, it even looks like spring. a fire plug. Is that, <laughs> is that the term? Like one of those? He's just he is. He is thick and wide, um, which I guess is good, right? Yeah. Like he is stout. Um, now, how does that translate to Big Ten defensive ends? I guess we'll find out. Sure. But certainly physically, he looks like a guy who accepted the challenge of this offseason to say, I know this is my moment to be the starting left tackle at Ohio State, which when he came out of high school four years ago, nobody in there, nobody but me believed that this was possible for him. So thank you. Uh, I'm so glad it's come to fruition so I can get more pats on the back. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's in I love when they get to talk about you know, what their weight goal is, how they accomplished it, because like Josh Fryer had to lose 10 pounds. Cam Martinez said he wanted to gain 10 pounds. It's it's such a crapshoot. And you'll folks will see it on the video. Cam looks noticeably different, uh, thicker uh, than he ever has. And so that you know, it is funny, I guess, to see how everyone has to get where they have to get. But for a guy like Cam Martinez playing defensive back, now firmly entrenched in it, you can tell he's like, I, if I want to hit people, I got to have a little bit more oomph behind me. And Josh Fryer, if I want to block Big Ten defensive ends, I got to be a little bit fleeter of foot. So um, I wish we could sit down in a meeting with these guys in, in the weight training staff and say, how do you come to these conclusions? <laughs> because I don't think Cam looked small. Yeah, but now he looks big. <laughs> That's like, all it was like Caden Curry when we when we started this offseason. Sure, like, after the Peach Bowl, you're like, oh yeah, that looks like we we know what Caden Curry looks like. And then the first practice we saw him, we were like, that's Caden Curry because yeah. that doesn't look like it. I didn't believe it. Yeah, um, but that's the way it goes. You watch these guys uh, grow and develop. Uh, also, really noteworthy as getting ready for Indianapolis and Marvin Harrison Jr.'s trip there. It was a Friday morning, and guess what he was doing, Berm? He was on the Monarch Machine. On the Monarch Machine. And the best part about what Marvin Harrison does on the Monarch Machine is that he, each one teach one type of thing. He, he's out here with Reese Stockdale, with Jaden Ballard, with Emeka Abuka, um, with Xavier Johnson. Like, these guys do everything together. And while you would love to see every receiver out here, the fact that there's these five guys who consistently are just working. Mm -hmm. all, I mean, 
it's it's now 40 minutes post their their workout time and ballard and abuka and Z johnson are still in the woody and now they're just kicking a soccer ball around because they just they just can't leave they don't want to leave here and that's a testament to what that room is about and, and uh, you know kudos to brian hartline for developing that culture all right that's enough for me and berm uh i'm still gonna be around here to lead the interviews but let's dive in i know you want to hear from the buckeyes so let's do that now all right we are joined now by ohio state Wide receiver, running back, hybrid, weapon, I don't know <laughs> what to call you at this particular moment, but Xavier Johnson, seeing your back for another get, another year and looking much healthier than the last time we saw you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah, what, so you, you got to start through spring ball, shut it down a little bit. I know I talked to you, you said mid-June was kind of when you were targeting. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that process like? You know, I, it wasn't anything too major, but mm -hmm. I know you don't like watching practice. Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I think that process... Uh, was good for me um, in a way. Um, it allowed me to, you know, uh, learn the game in a different component. You know, when you're out there playing um, every snap, uh, you kind of get fixated on sometimes just doing the motion and, and going through the motions. Um, but for me, I know, I, I think the next step of my game, uh, I've been playing for a long time. I'm getting very comfortable with the position of receiver. Um, and so the next step for me was cognitively taking that next step. Um, and so. I would say um, that was one thing that I think I really benefit from. I'm really, really grateful for um, actually in, in that moment. You know, there's so many different avenues, different ways that you can go. Your mind's spiraling <laughs> a thousand uh, different you know, ways. Uh, going into my, my final season of eligibility, you know, I, I, I have to deal with something like that. But I know the Lord had a better plan um, and, and kind of just, you know, sticking to that plan and, and trying to learn. Uh, you know, just more about my my body and being in better control of my body and um, cognitively watching, you know, different people and, and just really falling in love with watching film and, and figuring out, you know, exactly what I want to model my game after. Sure. Um, and so. Well, who did you come up with then? Uh, Keenan Allen. Okay. I, like, I watch a lot of Keenan Allen. I watch some Cooper Cup. I, I like nuanced receivers um, who, you know, get open, um, maybe not just off of athletic ability or, you know, some freakish uh like again yeah. athletic uh trait and whatnot but you know they have some nuance to them um and so i've been watching them um try to model my, my receiver game after them so so if you're let's say a month out for being full go again or how are you feeling any rust at all are you some people come back they say i'm better than i was right. before I, I don't know where you are in that process yeah yeah so i'm full go right now um we're still being smart everything's you know going to be based off of preparing me for september 2nd or september 3rd yeah. um I'm not sure which day. Uh, <laughs> first Saturday right, in exactly, September. Exactly. First Saturday in September. Um, so everything's going to be doing that, um, gearing me up, leading me towards that. I actually just had a, a talk with my uh, head at, uh, athletic trainer, and he, we just had that, that conversation, you know, going into camp. I'm a competitor, so I'm going to turn my brain off and try to go get it. And he's like, I'm going to be pulling you back and just, you know, <laughs> Trust me, type of thing. Um, but I feel good right now. Um, like I said, I've been trying to implement those little things that I, I see in Keenan Allen's game and, and Cooper Cup's game, and a lot of that is, you know, tempo and, and different different uh, approaches uh, that makes the DB uncomfortable. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of that. Um, feet feel good, much better than I expected. I mm -hmm. thought I thought there was going to be more rust, mm -hmm. but. Uh, definitely came back feeling pretty comfortable. So, all right. So let's put the football stuff aside for a second. You have to spend so much time in the training room, and when you more than you want, mm -hmm. more free time than normal. Is there something that you were watching or reading or mm -hmm. listening to to occupy some of that time um, outside of the Keenan Allen and Cooper? Yeah, Cuffin? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I spent a lot of time here. <laughs> I did spend a lot of time here. Uh, but actually, I'm, I'm getting into real estate. Um, oh, are so you? Okay. yeah, actually, I just uh, purchased. Uh, well, I'm in contract for a property now. Um, so a lot of my time was occupied with that. Um, actually, just got engaged. Oh, congratulations! Um, thank you, thank you. So, what? Hold yeah. on now. You're, <laughs> you're getting into real estate. You're getting engaged. Yes. And you're a former walk-on, getting ready for his last season, and scored, you know, a touchdown against Notre Dame, and then the Peach Bowl. Right. There's a lot on your plate. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir. I think I think I, I'm, I'm definitely been blessed, um, and I think the Lord has graced me, you know, with the ability to to handle all this, and it, it's really been. Um, I think the Lord was intentional to placing me here um, and, and having me grow through different adverse seasons um, and preparing me as a man, you know, as, a, as someone who can contribute to society and, and glorify the name of Jesus while doing so. Um, and so, like you said, I, I definitely have had a lot on my plate, but I've never, um, to, the, to the glory of God, I've never uh, been overcome. Um, <laughs> so even right now, you know, going into camp, it's, it's nice because camp is kind of that, that oasis of, sure. of just football. Um, and so 
Um, looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to getting back out there and competing with my brothers. Um, uh, but I got a couple of things I need to <laughs> take care of in the next couple of weeks leading up to it. All right. So there's two questions. We'll, we'll take them one at a time. Real mm -hmm. estate. What prompted you to dive into that? Yeah. Um, so honestly, uh, coming back, um, uh, Coach Walt, uh, Tim Wong, the DB's coach, he's, he's actually Cam Babs. Mm -hmm. Uh, best friend's dad. That's right. And so we had a, uh, we've gotten close um, over the time where, where we've been here. Um, and um, he actually was one of the people who really, you know, was pushing us towards that because real estate is, is a great way to, to be lucrative, um, especially early on um, in life. Um, and so you can acquire that property early, then that property now you're 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 um, acquiring equity, you know, through throughout your mm -hmm. life because you're, you're you're having that property. So um, that was kind of the one of the things that pushed me to it. And then when I, when I made the decision to come back, um, my mindset was I'm 24 now, um, and so kind of having that foresight of the fact that now I'm I am looking at stuff for bigger than just myself, you know, trying to build wealth, generational wealth and, and be able to give back, be philanthropic and, you know, um, do the Lord's work. Um, so I thought that I felt, you know, through some prayer, I felt that uh, the best way to do that and jumpstart some uh, financial uh, yep. growth uh, was, <laughs> would be to, to invest uh, pretty, what's the word, uh, not risky, but be more risk key with my investments. Sure. And so I felt that real estate was the best way to go. I love that. And where was the proposal? <clears throat> what was what went into the planning? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we had a, we actually had our first date um, down on the side of a mile, um, and so we were just kind of walking up and down side of a mile talking, and actually we crossed these uh, train tracks, which is probably illegal. So <laughs> can't don't give me in trouble. I think Prove statute it. of limitations. Right? Prove it. <laughs> statute <laughs> limitations might not have uh, passed on that, but uh, so um, the the proposal uh, we kind of did the same thing. Um, was with, was with my girlfriend and my, my cousin who's a videographer, photographer, and he was kind of capturing the whole thing. Did the, basically re recreated the first date. That's um, awesome. And then proposed her on the train track, so. That's awesome. Congratulations, uh, Xavier Johnson, getting ready. Camp is two weeks away, so he's got one more thing to get ready for right. amongst many. <laughs> X, we appreciate the time. Appreciate you, boss. Thanks, man. Thanks. All right, switching gears now and moving into the trenches, we are joined by Ohio State offensive tackle we won't even get into the left to right debate again. We had that throughout spring, yeah. but it's Josh Fryer. Yeah. Josh, I, I was joking with you beforehand. Do you want more summer or are you ready for training camp? <laughs> um, I, I think I'm ready. I think we're all ready. I think uh, football's upon us and I think uh, I think we're ready. Yeah. That what do you what do you do with a summer? I know there's a ton of workouts, but like let's put aside the football side. What what did you want to do for fun this summer? For fun, um, I'm a golfer. I like I like golfing, um, but also I don't know I can't get away from football too much because <laughs> I gotta get um, obviously I've gotten more comfortable at um, left tackle than spring ball. It was too different. I don't know how to say it, but it's just it's two different worlds. Like if you were if I was at spring ball, you'd be like, oh, is that guy at left tackle? Yeah. And then now I just feel totally comfortable there. Why do you, why do you think that is? <laughs> I think just more reps at it. I think getting my muscle memory down at left tackle um, is is a it just helps me more, I guess. Because I, I know there was like a lot of conversation. We had that throughout spring. It was like, how big of an adjustment is it? You thought it wouldn't be. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it it wasn't play wise. It wasn't um, like knowing all the techniques to come with it. It was just muscle memory of it. I, I kind of explained it to everybody is you try to write with your right hand, your right hand dominant, and then you try to switch with your left automatically. That's that's the kind of comparison it's I have. It's still with writing? It. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's it's just, uh, you just got to get used to it and you just got to do it over and over again. All right. Well, who's in the golf group? Is that offensive lineman or who? Yeah, I mean, I play with multiple different guys, but mainly um, it's probably Trey LaRue, Caden Curry, um, Quentin Burke, um, Austin Cervo, and uh, Josh Dilla. Dilla, I call him Dilla. Well, you have to <laughs> tell us how your game is right now. I mean, um, are, are we good at golf? Are we having I think, fun at golf? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think I'm pretty pretty good at golf. Okay. I, uh, yeah, because I think besides football, golf's the hardest game to ever play. I like to see the clip of Tyvis Powell trying to hit a six iron and yeah, throwing I his saw club that. in the creek. That was. Uh, we got to work on that. Yeah, so we work on that. it's not that easy. No. All these great athletes yeah. think they can just go out and hit a golf ball. Yeah. Hey, it's, give us some credit. It's, it's crazy how uh, 
Because it's really, it's not even anything physical. It's in between your head. I mean, that's the same thing for football as well. I think, uh, I think golf and football go hand in hand. Same thing like uh, if you watch like Last Dance, like Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. he said golf's the hardest game besides what he played basketball because it's all in between your head. Yeah. In between your ears, I'm sorry. What was, uh, what was the best place, <laughs> best course you played or the best round you had this summer? Best course I played, it's probably up in Dublin, the Golf Club of Dublin. Okay. That's probably like the, mo the most maintained course. Sure. And then um, 18 or 9, which, which <laughs> what score? You, which score? I, you tell me. You know, uh, if you're more proud of the one over the other, I understand. We, <laughs> so we went to um, Conroli Meadows in Marysville. Yeah. And I shot at 85. All right. That'll yeah, work. Yeah, so... It's a, it's a 18. I usually play 18. Try yeah. to get out and play. 18. I love that. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Um, any good food you had this summer? <laughs> I love food. I, <laughs> there's no specific one um, that I can really name. Okay. Were you in a position where you were allowed to kind of, within reason, eat with whatever you wanted, or did you have to, some guys have to cut all summer? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so, I was, my goal weight for the spring was 320, and I told Coach Make it's too heavy for me. I wanted to get down. So um, I'm playing like 310, 311 right now. Okay. So, yeah. so you did have to cut out a yeah. little something. What did, you, did you give something up? No, but it, it was mainly just just not eating after 5, 6 o'clock at night. And then you eat breakfast and you you already lost the weight, so you're totally fine after that. <laughs> Good. All right. So, well, <clears throat> final countdown is on. I mean, clearly you're ready for camp. Yeah. Yeah. I think we are. All are. When... You're getting a taste of that on Friday. You've done, you know, a camp in the woody with these kids and another mm -hmm. one you said with Trey LaRue. What are the pointers that you're giving to a young offensive lineman out there? They don't have pads on. Yeah, um, I think just go hard. I think that's the that, – and it sounds kind of cliche to say that, but if you give good effort and you go hard, no one's going to say anything to you that, oh, he's got bad technique. Yeah. No, but he goes hard. That's, that's right. What, yeah, I, I think that goes – even for the collegiate level, but you still have to have as collegiate level stuff yeah. to have some. The technique can, that can come over time. The yeah. effort, if you don't yes. give it, it's never going to happen. No. Uh, yeah. Not a question of that, of effort with Josh Fryer. We appreciate him jumping on with us for a little uh, Monday version of the podcast daily. Anyway, thanks, Josh. Thank you. All right. We are in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. We've got a little camp going on, and we have a coach here with us, Cameron Martinez. Cam, uh, these camps, getting to work with all the, all the kids, I know it's something that giving back has always been important to you. What do you like about getting out there and running around with uh, you know, some of the youngsters? I mean, you know, it's just the, the youth. Um, you know, that's where I started. Uh, I remember a time when I came here um, as a little kid going to a camp. And I remember, you know, I seeing this place and I'm like, that's where I want to go. So, <laughs> I mean, it all starts somewhere. And I think it all starts for them, too, as well. Um, you know, just being in this building. And I think it's, a, you know, a privilege to be able to be here. And um, like I said, they just get to work and uh, run around and stuff. I think it's everything. Do you have a list of drills you need to put them through, or I got a couple of mine? I'm gonna see how they move first, and okay, then, and then right. we'll see what uh, see what happens. But yeah, I got I got some. Right. I got a couple. Do you guys will you think get competitive about you know uh, everyone's group and position groups and getting them head to head and like take some credit for who can put the best stuff together today? I think so. Yeah, I mean the way this off season has been, it's just been all about competing um, and everything that we do. So I, it would be no surprise to me that it would be like no different um you know during this camp so yeah we're gonna see how it goes and um i think i feel good about you know what i what i have to do uh, so today sorry so, so the summer competitions cam you know you're pushing you're building you're getting ready for august do you wish that summer was longer or are you ready for camp no i think i'm i, I actually wish it was kind of shorter <laughs> if you think about it um you know i think no it was, it was good duration though um no i don't think so at all i think it's time i think we're all ready I think we're all ready to get out there, you know, put the pads on and, um, you know, get ready to try to win this thing. Um, it's been a long time. And like I said, I think we're all just excited for it. What do you think is the number one thing that you'll take out of everything you got accomplished after spring ball up until now? Um, you know, I think just getting better every day. Um, you know, I made a lot of changes to my body. I put on 10 pounds. Um, just making all these strides to, you know, I know what it takes now mm -hmm. to win a championship, um, how to get there, what we need to do. And it's kind of just putting all those pieces together, attacking the day every day, um, you know, the best that I can. And um, like I said, whatever I can do to help my teammates get better and also just help myself get better as well. How do you or how do you or Coach Mick or Coach Eliano or anybody decide you need 10 pounds this summer? Like what goes into that decision making process? Uh, you know, it was a conversation. It was a lot. Um, it started off with me and Coach E first. You know, I just wanted to say how, you know, I mean, me and him had conversations on how I could 
be on the field a little bit longer, what I can do to, um, you know, just make changes, make myself, like I said, always just getting better and yeah. improvement. Um, and that was one of the things that came up was just putting on weight, putting on more weight, getting bigger and stronger. Um, and at first it kind of was a little bumpy. Coach <laughs> Mick wasn't on board with it uh, right at first, but, you know, just my nutritionist and talking to Kayla and then just, you know, talking to all of them and them talking together and figuring, figuring out a way for me. Um, and we came out, you know, with the getting yeah, 10 pounds was actually a good idea. Yep. Um, and it's been good this off season so far too, as well. Um, and like I said, just keeping that going. So I know that you're eating smart to put that tent on, but do you, you get to eat a lot more, I would guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a time where I was almost putting on too much weight. Okay. So then I kind of had to eat a little bit less, which, you know, like I said, I was cool with that. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess anytime you get to eat more and not have to get faulted for it, um, yeah. you know, it's fine by me, so. What was the go-to meal? Go-to meal, um, a lot of steak. A lot of steak. A lot of steak and okay. rice. Um, Big, I'm a big hibachi guy. So really, okay, yeah. So being able to kind of do that and uh, breakfast was always the most important meal. I mean, most important meal of the day. So yeah. I mean, I always had to get right at breakfast. Were you starting the day with some steak, steak breakfast, nah. like steak, steak burritos? Nah, a lot oh. of pancakes though. Okay. A lot right. of pancakes. I love pancakes. So <laughs> um, the fact that I was still able to eat those, um, you know, I wasn't complaining at all. All right, so you, you guys got a little time off at the start of July. There's some free time where you're not just working out in the summer. What did you want to do? when you got away from, from ball and workouts? Just to hang with family and stuff. I mean, you don't get those moments often. I mean, anytime you get a chance to, you know, spend time and get a break, um, you know, I try to take the most advantage that I can for it. Um, so I kind of just went back home. It's always nice in the summertime. Um, <laughs> it's pretty nice. Up there. Yeah, yeah. So just enjoying time with the family. Um, I went up there for the fourth too. That okay. was nice. Um, and just relaxing, you know, like I said, it's a lot of times where we're just working, working, working. You know, sometimes you just need a, a moment to just, you know, regress and just um chill and uh, that's what they're able to do you guys get out on the water up there what do, what do you do oh yeah okay. yeah a lot of yeah getting on the water um you know i'm a big jet ski guy I like riding jet skis okay um and then like i said just taking walks i took a lot of walks with my mom you know we just kind of talked caught up on life yeah. and um for me that's like the best thing that i can that's the best thing of vacation for me yeah. is to do things like that that's great yeah jet ski time is just about over camp is starting in, in two weeks Cameron martinez is ready to get out there we thank thank him very much for taking some time out before camp to yeah. talk to us on the podcast daily. Thanks, Cam. For the first time now, talking with Ohio State defensive tackle Taiwan Malone, mm -hmm. uh, it's been probably a little bit of a whirlwind for you over yes, the last sir. six months. Are you settled in in Columbus yet? Yes, sir. Um, well, I've just moved to my new spot, got everything collected, so I'm all good in there. So here I'm all good, ready to rock and roll with the team. What's the hardest part about moving across the country? <laughs> just getting all your stuff from one to be. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a task, so I ain't gonna lie. I had a lot of moving trucks, get all my stuff. I had to, but I pretty much bought stuff down here that's home at the American Eagle, and I just put it in my house. So it was all good. All right, sounds like it was an easy one for you. Yeah. Then. Maybe the hardest part is not picking up the bat so much anymore. Yeah, that was probably the toughest decision I ever made. But I, I figured that football was a better opportunity for me and me and my family, so I just had to pursue on that. I remember Burn talking about you throughout the recruiting process. He's like, "Well, this guy is great. You know, four or five star defensive tackle. He also is a power hitting, you know, first baseman." I'm like, "What? <laughs> Those two things don't go together." I, is there a lot of crossover I mean, for those, from you? I mean, I've mostly been doing it my whole life. So when, since I was a little kid, I always played baseball. So it wasn't that tough. But as soon as I got to high school, you had to adjust to it. You know, you got to go to the football season. And right after that, you got to play baseball. So it was a lot of adjustment. But I knew what I had to do because I've been playing with it for a long time. So it was not that hard for me. What was your favorite baseball team growing up? <sighs> You're right in that area mm -hmm. where you could go a couple different directions, right? Yeah. It's going to shock a lot of people, but the St. Louis Cardinals was my favorite team. Okay. And I'll tell y'all why, because of my grandfather, because he like he that was like the first ever MLB game he ever played in front of my face was the Cardinals. So I okay. used to watch them all the time. All right. So big, big Pujols guy. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, Albert Pujols. That's my man right there. All right. Good. Um, so that part of it and leaving baseball behind, uh, is there still a part of you that is going to like get to next spring and like going to be itching to do it? Just go pick up a bat or take I mean, some BP? Like, I'm probably going to do some batting cages myself <laughs> just, to, just to see if I still got it. But uh when the spring comes, it's definitely going to be a challenge for me since I'm going to be used first time not doing it. I'm um, So I am going to be itching for it, but I just know I just had to adjust to my situation. So uh, We saw, you know, some of the training stuff that you were doing when I think you were back home a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and how would you say that your your body, your technique and all that stuff has changed over the last couple of years? It just it looks pretty remarkable on film. Yeah, I, I give all the credit to my man back home, Coach Leroy. He really taught me a lot of things growing up. And just having a great relation with him, he just keep building on that. So I just do everything he tells me to do. I just try to perfect my craft. That's all. All right. Let's set aside the workouts, football, baseball. What do you What do you like to do when you get away from sports? 
<sighs> that's gonna shock a lot of people. I like to sleep a lot. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, sleep is like my biggest thing. Like I, I used to say, like I used to go to hibernation because I could sleep all day if I really wanted to. <laughs> but other than that, I like to like I don't know, just play video games with my friends. You know, just I don't really like to do too much. I'm more of a home person, so I don't really like to go out a lot. But I like to do video games. Sometimes I actually like to draw a little bit or okay. like write my own like little stories. I never got to finish it though, but. When I'm bored, I just start trying to figure new things to do and stuff like that. So when you're getting ready to hibernate, like you need a special blanket, like you've got it all set, your, your perfect setup to go to sleep for a really long time? Yeah, I got my, my weighted blanket and I had to put my temperature at 68. 68? Yeah, I got to be in that cold, man. <laughs> and that heated blanket come on, it'd be nice and warm in there, so it'd be all good. Have you found, so you've been in Columbus for a couple months now, mm -hmm. have you found a go-to food spot yet? Ooh, there's a lot. Mm. I will say a go-to. I must be in here for. I ain't really say out. <laughs> well, a lot, yeah, a lot of meals over there in the corner. Yeah, yeah, what so. saying is, but the one place I always want to try is the Eagle. I don't know if you oh, heard yeah, of it. Yeah. So I, that's the place I might try out this weekend. Actually, see how that is. So. I think you won't regret it. For real? yeah. I also had a damn. It was like a Jamaican spot. I forgot the name of it. Hmm. You know any Jamaican spots? I, haven't, I don't think I've had any Jamaican. I think it's like clubs. jerk. Ah, oh, no, that's not it. When I find the name, I'm gonna yeah, let okay, you know. We gotta I let you know. <laughs> I don't know what uh, Berm did here. Um, I don't know. It was like that, I think, the whole time. So, not sure how great any of that was. Um, yeah. It was definitely not like that. I, I don't know. I looked over because I was looking at Taiwan. So, I don't know what. It would be funny. We'll say, well, we're not going to cut it because Taiwan's got a limited amount of time. <laughs> Maybe Berm can come up with some pictures to put over that. We're sorry for the technical issues. He's never going to talk to us again on the podcast. <laughs> it's, all right, it's cool. Yeah. So that was not great, but it's an introduction. He is still here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's getting ready for his first season in Columbus. We'll get back another time, touch base. We'll figure out where you wanted to eat to the Jamaican spot. Yeah. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll figure out some technical issues next time <laughs> I got that was you. good but we appreciate it. the first time it was great to meet him uh awesome. big season training camp coming up in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. thanks Taiwan. appreciate you thank you thank you right, moving along right here it's it's not an offensive update it's a defensive update from new and returning i guess returning to columbus ohio state cornerback safety i'm not sure where you're going to wind up lorenzo corner maybe but you're back home after a couple of years at Notre Dame. How does it feel like you've been gone for a while or you settle right back into a rhythm? Uh, of I mean, I think it, I settled back in pretty fast. Uh, it feels great to be home. I knew during the recruiting process, I knew a lot of these guys because I came up to Ohio State a lot too. So it's a lot of familiar faces, uh, a lot of a lot of my family around me. I'm 20 minutes outside of Pickering in Ohio. So yeah, it's been it's been a smooth transition. And I'm sure a lot of, you know, vacation off season time is with the family and being back here. So it's not like you were you know, yeah. missing out a lot in the last three years. What was the first thing you wanted to do though when you got back full time? I think it's probably how my mom cooked for me. <laughs> my mom, she's made me some great mac and cheese, greens, uh, fried chicken, all that. So, and then to really hang out with my brother too. It's been great. We're getting, we've been, uh, when I was away, we were still close, but uh, I mean, it's just different, like being face to face and like being able to be his big brother again and uh, mentor him, have him just learn off of him too, just, um, just bounce off each other. So that's been great. I, I, You've probably been asked a million times about the decision process. We don't have to go through all of that, yeah. but just the, that opportunity to be back around Sonny uh, and, and on the same team with him. What do you? What's that mean to you? I don't. I'm not saying it drove your decision making process in any yeah. way, but just that opportunity that you have now. What does it mean for you? Um, the way I, the way I would put it is, uh, I think it's a great opportunity to play here with my brother. Um, and it's kind of a, like, I don't want to say a dream come true, but this is uh, you don't really see too many brothers uh, on the same field at the same time. So uh, just being able to make some plays together and do some great things uh, on the field together would be amazing. And then uh, especially like it's just a one stop shot for my mom and my dad, <laughs> which makes it easier on them. So uh, just d playing the game we love in the state, in the state we love where we're from. Um, it's, it's amazing. Did they did they feel uncomfortable going over to South Bend a lot or was that it? Was that easy for them? Uh, no, it was easy for them. It's in the Midwest, not too far. But um, I mean, they had to just pick which who had the really the bigger game or like how like they had to make certain decisions sure. on games. But now it's just, uh, you know, where they're going to be out on the weekends. Is there somewhere that you like to hang out or, or eat in South Bend that you're going to miss? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, prob probably the lower. But being honest, it was the friendships. I have a bunch of great friends uh, that I that I really appreciate. Um, I, those relationships will be for, for a lifetime with me. 
Uh, I think that's what made the place great. They had great people, but um, this is about just going to work and trying to try to maximize this, uh, this game I love. You only get to play it one time, and I want to take advantage of it. When you've had some opportunities that's not workouts, being in the Woody, getting ready for the season, what do you like to do? Uh, I mean, a big thing is the people, but I think really I like to hang out with my boy Jack. That's my that's my guy. <laughs> Me and Jack grew up in Perryton together. Uh, I like to hang out with Sonny a lot. Um, we, we, we've we been going out on the lake a lot, Buckeye Lake. We go out there a lot and hang out, ride <laughs> jet skis, go out on the boat. But um, really, it's, we're really not t uh, doing too much right now. It's, we're trying to, he's going to his junior year. I'm going to my junior year. It's uh, strictly business. So we have Saturday and then we're really getting ready for ready for the week. Who who would be the best jet skier? Who could go win? A race on those. I mean, the the only way, the only reason I would say Jack is just because he's been on him more. But give me, give me a little bit more time. I think, I think I'm, I'm gonna get him. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, anything you are watching or listening when it's not game film right now? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've been watching Ted Lasso a lot. Um, but really, for me, like, yeah, I, I've been up in this building. <laughs> I've been up in this building. Uh. I'm, I'm a new guy, so like I gotta learn. I gotta learn all this defense and stuff. But um, definitely, I, I I like to watch a lot of TV. I like to watch Netflix and stuff. When I that's like my before I go to bed, like an hour and I like I make sure I put a put a show on. How far into Ted Lasso are you? Uh, I'm I'm pretty deep. Like I've been watching a lot of the new season. Okay. So I just gotta finish it up. I don't I don't really want to. I don't want any spoilers. Right, spoilers oh, so right? Have you watched it already? Uh, yeah. yeah. I was say it's pretty good. So <laughs> it's a good series. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Um. All right, well, let's leave it at that. You're, you're going to have to spend a lot more time talking this once the season rolls around. Yeah, no so doubt. we'll let you go uh, coach out there. A lot of that with Care Source and uh, 1870s, cool yeah. stuff. What have you been, what are you teaching out there? Uh, right now, <laughs> I just got to, I got to go out there. I've been talking to the kids. I know they've been happy to see some faces, some of the guys on the team. So, uh, I mean, yeah, just really, really trying to motivate them just to go out there and, and work hard. There you go. All right. Lorenzo Styles is going to go do that, and Berm's going to come back in here, and we'll wrap it up uh, on Appreciate a it. Monday episode of the Podcast Daily. Thanks, yes, Lorenzo. Sir. See you. All right. Thanks again to those Buckeyes for joining us on, as Berm called it, a manic Monday to start your week on the Podcast Daily. Uh, we will be back later on at Roosters uh, with the live show in the Horseshoe Lounge. Can't wait for that. Uh, talking to Bobby and Jay-Z will be there. That's going to be fun. We'll talk more about Big Ten Media Days and then uh, going to probably work on uh, a podcast daily for Tuesday, which we are hoping to have a pretty big guest. Never know what happens in July. So let's just uh, make it better. Okay, well, let's do that. We'll talk to you later.